One of the central elements of modern Russian civil aviation history continues to be the destiny of the 2204 and 214 family. These aircraft were designed to succeed the widely used T-154 and to serve as the foundation of a new domestic fleet of mainline airliners. However, the project's progression was irregular and its execution lacked consistency. To comprehend the reasons behind this and the prospects for resuming 2214 production, it is necessary to consider the insights of an individual who was present at the inception of the program. Oleg Alashiv, former principal designer of the 2204 and its variants, examines the technical choices, political challenges, missed opportunities, and the current condition of the industry in an interview with Business Online. In the 1990s, prior to the certification of the TU 204, the Yakovlev Design Bureau initiated the development of the Yak 242, a project that subsequently evolved into the MC 21. Alashiv observes that initially there was no sense of rivalry, as the 2204 was already established as a completed aircraft. Its design began in 1983, its inaugural flight occurred on January 2, 1989, and its first passenger flight took place on February 23, 1996. The MC-21, in comparison, flew only in 2017. However, the circumstances later shifted as the MC-21 program advanced, its avionics and configuration appeared increasingly modern, making the TU-204 seem comparatively outdated. Nevertheless, the final modification, the TU-204SM, which conducted its maiden flight on December 29, 2010, and was scheduled for mass production in 2013, was, according to Alashiv, an excellent aircraft. It featured a thoroughly upgraded avionics suite, a streamlined two-person cockpit, and substantially enhanced automation. The future of the 2204SM became a pivotal turning point in the stagnation of the program. According to Alashiv, political authorities at multiple levels lacked interest in progressing the aircraft's development. A major issue was the absence of guaranteed orders. Without them, serial production was not economically viable. The second issue concerned the PS90A3 engine, a fully digital and upgraded iteration of the PS90A. Its development was rushed, requiring additional funding to refine the design and expand production capacity. The government declined to allocate funding, and suppliers indicated that producing the engine would be unprofitable for only a small number of aircraft. Work continued almost entirely due to the dedication of those involved. But, as Alashiv stated, you can't break through a wall with your forehead. One of the most common criticisms of the TU-204 TU-214 is its fuel efficiency. The aircraft consumes approximately 10% more fuel than comparable foreign models. In the 1990s, this argument held considerable weight for Yegor Gaidar, who told Alashiv that aviation development was protracted and costly and that agreements with Boeing had already been secured. Alashiv warned that such dependence was risky. The United States could press the throttle at any moment. According to him, this happened in 2022, when Russia's reliance on foreign aircraft reached a critical point. One of the most significant missed opportunities was the Tu-2-04-120 project equipped with Rolls-Royce engines developed jointly with Egyptian entrepreneur Ibrahim Kamel. The aircraft showed excellent performance in service, and Krasair intended to operate them. Five aircraft were built. However, customs authorities unexpectedly mandated a 25% increase in the assessed value of imported components, despite previously established agreements. The project partners could not absorb the additional costs. Kamel appealed to the highest authorities in Russia and received assurances, but no action followed. The aircraft were ultimately relocated to Egypt, where they were successfully operated. The Tu-214 was developed as a longer-range, larger version of the Tu-204. Production was assigned to Kazan due to the political influence of Tatarstan's president, Mintimer Shamiev, who had direct communication 
with Boris Yeltsin. After production of the 222M3 and 2160 ended, the Kazan facility required new work, leading to the selection of the 2204-200, later designated as the 2214. However, political support was inconsistent, and promised commitments were never fully executed. Although the aircraft designs were similar, maintenance support for the 2214 was less systematically organized than for the 2204 produced at Aviastar in Ulyanovsk. The initial 2214 fleet operating in the Russian Far East experienced recurring technical issues. Supplying 2214 aircraft to Tatarstan Airlines could have created a localized support ecosystem, enabling closer feedback and improved reliability. Instead, the aircraft was deployed to the Far East, where operational conditions were more challenging. Diplomatic negotiations with Iran also stalled. According to Alashiv, Iranian authorities frequently shifted their position, supporting agreements, and then pivoting back toward engagement with the United States. As a result, neither the 2214 nor the 2204 projects advanced. In 2022, Russia announced the resumption of serial production of the 2214. Some critics argue the aircraft is obsolete. Alashiv disagrees in part. The airframe itself requires minimal changes, while modernization is primarily needed in avionics and onboard systems. Time is the critical factor. Modernization may delay production, but producing the aircraft without modernization limits long-term operational value. He argues that the most serious issue today is the erosion of continuity within design bureaus. The Tupolev company has had six directors in 10 years, which Alashiv describes as chaos. He advocates restoring the Kazan Design Bureau branch, emphasizing that close collaboration between engineers and production is essential. According to Alashiv, significant damage has been done to civil aviation, but not everything is lost. Restoration will require at least a decade of sustained effort. He recalls that Germany needed about 40 years to rebuild its aviation school after World War II, even under official restrictions. The main problem, he asserts, is that leadership roles are occupied by general purpose managers rather than aviation specialists, which he considers unacceptable. When asked what question he would pose to the nation's leaders of previous decades, Alashiv replies, Where were you? You slept and slept and slept through the entire civil aviation industry. In conclusion, the history of the TU-204, TU-214 is defined by unrealized decisions, political priorities overriding technical considerations, failed opportunities for international cooperation, and the absence of a comprehensive long-term aviation strategy. Aircraft that could have formed the basis of an independent national fleet were sidelined, and now the nation must rebuild the industry nearly from scratch. Nevertheless, Alashiv remains cautiously optimistic. The expertise and educational foundations have not been fully lost, and the current situation presents an opportunity for restructuring. The key question is whether sufficient political will and consistency will be demonstrated. If you think the video was informative, please like, subscribe, and share. Please also take membership of the channel to encourage us 